Great morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. You all are not new faces. You guys know the deal. This is Breakthrough Mastermind Group. And again, the premise, we've built this on the eight lifestyle categories. So if you're ever looking to change who you are, what you are, or where you are in your life, it always starts with those foundational components. Today's topic, recreation. Yep. Great topic. So those of you that have joined before, you've already met Rosa. Rosa is absolutely phenomenal. I'm so excited to hear from her today. Um, again, she's sent out that worksheet to everybody. So just make sure that you pull that up on the side of the screen. And we're really going to just dive into it. But guys, recreation is different for everyone. Now, I've met a lot of people in life, myself included, where sometimes the recreation, there's too much recreation and it detracts from the focus points. But you do need to have recreation to balance things out. It's a really good way to clear your head, level yourself, and, and be the best you to move forward. So this is a very important topic, although people overlook it sometimes. But I'm so excited to hear from Rosa. For those of you that are that are getting on a little bit late, you may have not heard this, but Rosa's moving soon. So we got to really cherish the time that we have with her today. Rosa and I met in a networking group several months ago. It's almost been a year actually coming up, but it's been a phenomenal journey. She's an absolute selfless person. She always leads from the front. She's so gracious. She gives and gives and gives. She's got a phenomenal business structure and plan. So I'm really excited because I know she's going to share some of that stuff with us today. Very, very powerful stuff. If you haven't had a chance to speak with her, definitely reach out to her. But without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome Rosa. Hello, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. It's so, so kind with your words, Keegan, always. Okay, let's just talk about recreation right away. Um, we know what typically we think of recreation is this fun activity that we do when we have some off time, right? But like Keegan said, it's such a unique and personal thing for every single one of us. So I would like to start by just taking a moment to writing down our personal favorite activities that we consider recreation, and then we'll go from there. And when you feel like you have enough on your list or you've completed your thought, maybe let's go ahead and spitball some ideas so that I can keep track of everyone. I'll go ahead and start. Um, so some of these fall into other categories as well, but for me, these are recreation. So reading, the gym, anything outdoors, spending time with family, and then I love building Legos. It's like a secret little, little hobby of mine. <laughs> nice. Anyone else would like to share? I'll share. Good morning. morning. Um, this is kind of strange. It's um, stimulating conversation. 
is a very important thing for me. To me, that's a form of recreation and relaxation. Um, playing with my animals, church, and that includes Bible study, um, medit meditating, praying, and re self-reflection. That has actually become something that has been kind of part of my re recreation. I don't do a whole lot of physical, so I'm not going to sit there and go all, all this physical stuff because that ain't me at this point. So <laughs> just honest. <laughs> Honesty is key. That's why we're here, right? All right, Ashley, you wanted to say something too? Oh yeah, um, I have walking, singing, dancing, shopping, going to the beach, exercising, talking, and spending time with my babies. All right, Matt. Do I have to? Not so sleep. No, you don't have to. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. So the next thing, thank you for sharing. I can share as well. Um, playing music is a big one for me. I think that singing and is a big therapy for me because sometimes I just want to do play that gutsy song that gets all of my angst out, and then here we go. Um, and something that is in line with what you guys said is spending time with people where I can be fully relaxed with. That's a big thing for me. Like when I don't have to present anything, I can just be. That's such a recharging and rewarding experience that I have to have, um, especially on the days when I do a lot of presenting. I do a lot of teaching. I do a lot of things like that. And physicality, of course, dancing. Yes, I'm a dancer. I have to do this. Like there is no way I don't do that. Um, but yeah, so now I want us to look at these activities that we thought of and think about what those each of those activities recreates for us. So recreation is recreating and we, I think we talked about that in the last, like about a month ago when we had a similar conversation. So yeah, looking at an activity and just asking yourself, what is it recreating? And also what need does this satisfy for me? Thinking about this in a way that I need this and this does this. So please. Rosa, I, I, I'll go ahead and answer that. For me, mm -hmm. the church and the Bible study, it rejuvenates me. Um, Wednesday, it's hump day. And all of the things around the, our world and Wednesday night, I've been dead dog tired and I can go there and I'm interacting with people that know me and we are all of like-mindedness and it just rejuvenates me. Um, and the stimulating conversation, it, it activates um, different parts of my mind. It really, and there's a joy in that because I like being mentally sharp and I love the, the actual conversing with somebody, hearing their viewpoints, allowing me to share my viewpoints. And um, Playing with my animals, there's such a bond with my dog and my cat. It's just the three of us. And so um, that's, it's recreating. It was, I, I love that concept and that we're recreating something in our day-to-day -day life that, that fills us and gives us joy and renews us and rejuvenates. Love it. A lot of community for you. That seems like a very, very big thing for you. I'll share. So I think the reading is helping with knowledge, which really mostly impacts my business. 
I love to be able to bring different perspectives and help in, in that teaching process. So for me, it's, it's a responsibility. It's something I have to do, but I enjoy it. The, the gym is really, mm-hmm. it helps me achieve particular goals and, and it sets the tone for my day. If I don't go to the gym in the morning, I just feel like I can't operate at full capacity. The outdoors, that's really recentering. So it, it's kind of recreating that headspace for me and just getting focused. I, I make sure that I take breaks throughout the day, take the dog outside. Um, and the family is really that love. It's, it's that connectedness, that bond, that sense of community, but also again, feeling that sense of responsibility to be able to contribute and help back. And then the Legos, that's just a creative thing. That's just fun. It kind of kills time. So it takes my mind off some of the bigger stuff sometimes. Mm. Yeah, you have, it sounds like you're really a big driver for you is being there for people and making sure that your community is taken care of and organized. That's amazing. Thank you. I will share. Um, It's kind of interesting, like as I was looking down my list, there's like quite a few things that I feel like um sort of help me maintain like a routine um which I think is doesn't necessarily sound like recreation but like it just helps you know have like you know your puzzle put together you know um and then another thing that's you know I'm recreating would be connection and um it's sort of interesting because I consider myself to be sort of an introvert And, um, so like my first thing isn't always like, oh, I need, I should call X person and like have a chat, you know, like, because I'm just to myself and, you know, move on with my day. But there's one day last week when I ran into a few of my neighbors who I enjoy speaking with. And I realized that after I spoke with them, I was just feeling like so happy and so like, it just really made my day to have spoken with them. Um, So that was kind of cool. It was just that connection, um, you know, just something that we don't get as often these days. And um, then my next one would be like childhood things. So like recreating childhood, you know, memories or things that I enjoyed as a child, you know, going to the beach is, I did that. I was fortunate enough to do that growing up. And I make it a point to continue that on, not only for myself, but to recreate those memories with my sons as well. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. First of all, yes, routines are important and we'll talk about it just below, actually. That's it. And I think the theme that came up both for you and for Keegan is those, like I think Legos are, and going to the beach, recreating the childhood memories of when you're doing things just because you enjoy them, not because you have to successfully achieve a product or a result, which we are, most of our life is around that now, when we're adults, where I can relate to that from my career as a dancer. I started doing it because I love it so much right but after a certain amount of time it becomes a job so my recreation the activity that used to be a recreation becomes a job so I need another recreation of sorts I started painting I started playing music because I needed something that did not that my livelihood did not depend on which is, I think, a big aspect of recreation, where recreating that childhood approach to life in those moments, which is not realistic in 24-7 period, but those moments are what remind us to be a little lighter during every day life. So thank you for sharing that. Matt, would you like to stay private or share something as well? was this Russian roulette, you know, pick, uh, pick which one and, you know, or like the blue pill, the red pill, like, uh, like the matrix or something. So 
Um, what exactly do you want me to share? Do you want me to share the activities? Um, I mean, I don't know exactly what, what you want me to share. Whatever you want to share, you can share an activity and what it satisfies for you, or you can share just the activity or you can share just what you need satisfied by your activities. It's really up to you. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm under the general consensus that um, we shouldn't all be working all the time. Humans were, were not meant for that. And if you go back to the cave people days, so I can't say cave man, because that's not politically correct, or cave woman, or, you know, cave thing or whatever. Um, but, you know, basically, we're, we started off as hunters and gatherers. And we'd have, uh, you know, the, the flock or the herd of people. And if you didn't stay in the flock or herd, you died. So ultimately, um, initially, we didn't start out as just working all the time. And that was the end of it. So I, I agree, there has to be balance. I mean, you know, there can't be, uh, um, um, you know, drama without nighttime TV. You know, there can be Cardi B without Offset, you know. Um, so ultimately, you have to have balance. You know, there can't be Luke Skywalker without Darth Vader. So, um, so for me, in terms of some things I like to do, animals are a big thing. Um, I like listening to the birdies chirp. Um, and so, or I like to watch the duckies, or as I call it, Operation Foul Ball. Um, and because they are really quacked up. And then, of course, there's music, which I'm very into. Um, you know, being in a band and choir. Um, and then technology, duh. I mean, I do it for a living. And uh, lastly is keeping clinics, clinics in business. And that's why I buy it at bulk at Costco, it's cheaper. That's great. Okay. So now I would like us to look at our routines. So if we scroll a little low, a little down, we can think about or look at how our recreation activities fit within our schedule. And you can use the questions to, you're not gonna have to share the answers to these questions. It's more important that you honestly respond to them by, for yourself without the pressure of you know, being heard. Um, so take a moment to respond to these questions by your on your own. And then I'll share, I, I think your table is empty because I didn't want to put in my bias in there, but I'll use my table as an example. That's a table that I came up with I'm sure someone else came up with that before too, but that's something that I built for myself last winter when I was going a little crazy. And I was like, I had different urges to get away and then decided that I just am lacking on certain areas. So I started tracking my activities and I thought that was such an incredible practice that I wanted to share with you. Just to touch on that while everybody's working on this, tracking is one of the biggest things. And I love that you brought this up, Rosa, because oftentimes when we think about recreation, most people are like, why would I even track that? But what you'll find is that there will be activities or habits that you can do in your daily practice that do clear your head. And then we get caught up in life and we may forget those things. So having a, a sheet that you can go back to and see what worked or see what didn't work is really powerful. Some of us here have talked about SMART goals. You guys probably know that acronym, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time. When we look at the tracking portion of recreation, it's a measurability. The same thing is true if you are you know, exercising or if you're doing a financial report or whatever that is, you always have to have something that you can go back to and reference. So I think this is a great, a great sheet to touch on. And it's interesting to me because 
you've placed the financial and business development, the social, the creative, the education, self-improvement, and the physical, but those are also in line with, with the eight categories that we, we walk through. So I think it's just a, a really powerful way. There's also a wheel, uh, and this is in one of the documents that I sent you guys, but you know, that's, that's for me, it's the same thing that Rose is sharing here, right? It's just a trackability. It's a way to go back, jot some notes down and be able to reference it at any point in time and then make adjustments. So I just wanted to share that. And then the five themes at the top are the needs that I have. So yours might be completely different. Like Marlene, for example, you were like, I'm not into physical like at all. I don't care about that. It doesn't have to be. Physical is a great way for me to offset my social interactions because it allows me to reclaim myself a little bit more. But that's what works for me. And that doesn't mean that it works for other people. But, and something and to piggyback on what Keegan was saying, something that this helped me recognize also is it gave me a list of things that I've done throughout the day. So I don't mm -hmm. feel bad about taking an extra time to do nothing or to do something that is not so called productive or you know, um, so are we, how are we doing on the questions? Um, also, one thing I'll say is that if you change the font, like I did like Arial 12, you'll have the whole um, chart within one page, right, right, right? It's cut off, at least on my machine. So if you change your font and you change the size of the font, you'll have the chart all within one screen. Thank you, Matt. I don't have the page separation, so I, it doesn't show in it on my like that. But thanks. Keegan, is there a way I could share my screen so I can show yep. my table? Absolutely. You're you're good. Great. Oh, fuck, please. Thank you. All right. So this is me going through my day. Oh, no, excuse me. Today as an example. And this is a little paragraph here just to remind ourselves that our needs change throughout the seasons throughout the months. And every time I feel that I've, oh, I locked it down, there's a perfect formula that works. Something in my life changes. And I'm like, oh, damn it, I have to change it all again. But that's when we learn, right? And that's what's exciting and stimulating because you got to wire the mechanism again. Um, okay, so like I said, these are my five elements that needs that I need fulfilled and there are subcategories within them but these are the main ones and like I mentioned before we all have different ones so don't feel like you have to stick to this um, and what I do is I take an activity for example when I was putting together the document or finishing the document today I called it a recreation packet. So that activity for me was both business development, it was both creative, and it was both educational. And I've learned something for myself, right? And I rate them these on a one scale, a scale of one. And when they're for each category, um, this number, is a whole number. So in the business development, I'd say it's 0.5 for me. In creative, it's 0.5 for me. In, in education, it's 0.5 for me. These, they don't have to add on to anything together as an activity. They're independent. 
let me give you a better example here. So for example, this call right now is, again, it's a business development for me, which is at 0.5. There, it's a social interaction, which is a whole point because we're doing a lot of talking, we're doing a lot of pre uh, presenting and interacting with each other. It's very focused in that way. And then there's also some creative, creative work involved or stimulation involved for me because we are learning new things and we're inspiring each other and all these things. And same with self-improvement and education, here we are. Um, so I look at all of my activities through this lens and sometimes, for example, I am going to have a pretty serious conversation with my partner tonight. And that's a two because even though we're on the scale of one, but it's gonna take a lot out of me. So it's a two. And all together at the end, I end up calculating how much points I get from each section. And then as I'm looking at all these activities, the ones that I put in bold are the ones that I feel like there are the recreation activities. And so today those are gonna be, I'm gonna, um, on my walk to teaching, I will be listening to news podcasts because that keeps me focused and in charge of where I'm at socially. And also it adds on a little bit of the social interaction and social awareness. So I put a little point two on my social scale here too, right? Um, because I'm doing a lot of social activities today, all of the activities that where I'm by myself and I'm recharging feel like recreation, even though tomorrow that might not feel the same way. So when I'm talking about the fluid, fluidity of this chart, I'm talking about these things that different activities or the same activities might worth different amount of points depending on day to day, depending on what else I'm doing, what I've done yesterday. Um, tomorrow, I might refrain from social interactions because I had a lot of social activity today because I am somewhat introverted as well. I need time by myself to recharge. Um, and that's why working out and being physical is very important for me today. That's kind of how I'm balancing myself off. But again, this table is less, typically I would do this at the end of the day because it would also allow me to look at what I've done and how I am preparing for the next day mentally. And then report is what keeps track of where I'm at. So it's a little intricate, but that's what's been working for me. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, thoughts, questions, concerns. I'm gonna stop, I think. Stop sharing. I appreciate you sharing that, Rosa. I think that my thought is that it's fascinating to see somebody else's organizational skills or techniques because we all we all need to track things in a way, but it may be different for each person. So seeing your graph and your explanation of it in the point system, it brings up a couple of points. And that's really that's really interesting to me. Whereas, you know, Ashley or Matt or Marlene may track their stuff, but completely differently. You know, and I think that that's a really, really valuable mm -hmm. point is that, hey, look, it doesn't matter how you do it, but it's important that you track it. So I think that's a, a really powerful point. So I just wanted to share that. What are, does anybody else have other thoughts or comments on it? Um, I love this. It's interesting when you were like explaining it and the point system and everything. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard, I don't know, like, I can't explain it very well, but basically if someone suffers from anxiety, there's like the spoons. So like if you start the day with like eight spoons, depending on what you um, have to do for the day, like for example, cooking breakfast, that could take like four of your spoons and then you only have four spoons for the rest of the day. 
to like, and then you're going to have to pick and choose like what activities you're going to do. Um, and so I thought I, that was like a, that's a different, whole different thing, but like, it reminded me of that, like, you know, just how you're distributing um, your energy or like meeting your own needs, um, which is like so important. And um, Keegan and I, and I have spoken about something that I decided to implement, which sort of Marlene reminded me of this, like Wednesdays, um, I have deemed like date night for me and my boys. Um, and so like, we'll just, I'll make a point to like get out of the house that day. Um, and it's helpful for me mostly because then that helps me from like getting burnt out by Friday um, or like living for the weekend. Um, and it can be like something small, but it, it really has helped me um, create a nice flow for myself um, in my mental space and um, just, you know, recognizing. But I also think that was so cool how you mentioned like you're like it's always changing because I definitely feel like that, especially being a parent, like you've got a routine down and then like all of a sudden you're like, wait a second why is this not working? Like this was working before, you know, but I think like you said, like that's with everyone, like life just like you, I think the best thing is realizing, okay, take a step back. This isn't working anymore. How can I rearrange it? Like, are these things still important to me? Um, you know, where can I put them and so on and so forth. And, um, yeah, so I thought that was very cool. I'll be happy to elaborate on any, um, anything else if requested. I think that's so great that you're saying that. And what I learned through experience and just observing people is that when we do have this tracking system or some way of checking in with ourselves, we're able to recognize that things are not working before it gets way out of whack. And we're able to respond in the moment and like okay oh things are not working why okay let's let's sit down let's look at what we used to work and what changed what changed since the time that I came up with this system for myself and then adjustments are made and then we're fine no one no one's hurt too much <laughs> you know so yay So I want to I want to share something and then I would love to hear from Marlene or Matt if you guys have any thoughts on this but one of the things that you had mentioned Rosa is change and it's so it's so interesting to me when people say oh I I can't stand change like my youngest sister she says all the time she's like I can't stand change I don't want anything to change I don't want my room to change I don't want the day to change like she doesn't like it but the truth is is that part of life is always changing you guys may or may not know this but did you know that in, in the average adult, every 11 months, our physical cells change? Every 11 months, our physical cells change. So that means our physicality is changing. So if you don't take the time to implement strategies, habits, techniques, routines, you're just going to change negatively and, and regress. And the brain changes every seven months. So those are, those are fascinating points to me. I want to share, and you guys already have this, but I just want to share this really quickly because I think this just goes to show the importance of what Rosa is sharing. But if you can see right here, can you guys see? The, this is the original graph that, that we had. And if you, if you break it down, again, this is based on the eight lifestyle categories. So basically you have them all here and below, and you would prioritize what's the most important to you. And this is different for everybody. And by the way, some of these will change. Some people may want to change one out with community, for example. But when you put it in based on your priority and then you rank how you are applying this each day on a one to 10 scale, you'll see how would you rank your current contribution? Three, five, eight, nine, whatever that looks like. And then that this shows you that there's an opportunity to increase. So basically, just like Rosa is saying, is you, you have to have a reflection point. And that's such a big thing. I know that we've talked about this before, but, you know, in my experience, when, when I hear the word reflection, I think back to childhood and it's, oh, you did this wrong, go think about it. 
but there's also a lot of power in the alternative and using reflection as a tool to go back and say, oh, well, this worked for me. And that's such a powerful thing because you already have the confidence instilled in you that I can do this because I've done it before. And this didn't work. Let me adjust this. So again, I just think that the, the concept of tracking recreation is just, it's amazing. Um, you know, but Marlene, Matt, I'd love to hear what your thoughts, thoughts are on this. Um, I was looking at my list and honestly, the one thing um, that I included was environment. And Keegan and I have talked about that for me as well. Um, my environment, my home environment was very overwhelming to me. And so I had someone who came in and literally from front to back, side to side, completely redid, reorganized my entire home. And I felt a burden just leave me. And I felt this relief and this release. And so for me, environment is now a very high priority on my day to day because use it, put it away. Don't let anything sit out, utilize. I, she created spots I, 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 I never pictured. So for me, because that has released and I have a way of breathing, now I'm able to be looking at some of these other things and yes, physical is something that I do need to build on. I get fairly well and then I fall off, and, but it's getting better. Um, the, for me, the, so, the, um, another thing on the recreation is um, I'm writing a cookbook. So that is another piece so there's a lot of pieces, and, and I just have to say that this Breakthrough Mastermind group, it really feeds me. I cannot miss my Tuesdays with y'all. Every single session, I love hearing every one of you. I miss some of the other people that I've seen in other sessions. Matt, you could tell jokes all day long. I'm sitting here just dying. I got to keep the mute off because I'd interrupt everybody with the laughing. I love Ashley's input. You know, there's just so many things. I've already taken a bunch of notes. So um, I'm going to be quiet because I'd love to hear what Matt has to say. But um, very good. I like this, the, the, you know, these different charts. This is another way of incorporating new things of organization into my day-to-day -day for my personal growth. I'm on a journey and I wanna keep going forward. That was beautiful, Marlene. Thank you so much. I have something to say. No one else wants to speak. Matt, did you want to talk? I saw you when I'm muted. Well, I don't know. I mean, is, is it my turn? I mean, is the, 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 the proverbial parking spot open? <laughs> it is your turn. I, I never know. It's, it's almost like, you know, musical chairs, you know, like, do we, <laughs> do we all keep going around till we, till somebody is left standing or something? So <laughs> it's like, tag, you're it. It's like, shit. Uh, <laughs> so, um, well, I appreciate, you know, all the kind words, Marlene. Um, it's, uh, um, I'm quoting Alanis here. Isn't, I, isn't it ironic, don't you think? Uh, because this is, the, this is the censored version of me. Keegan's gotten some of the uncensored. So like Miley, I can't be tamed. So, but in terms of the, um, the list here, I definitely think there has to be a structure in, in some type of hierarchy. You have to know where your life is going. So if you don't have the proverbial GPS of your life, I'm not talking Apple or Google, you don't have a direction in terms of where you're going. And 
it's the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting something to change. So you to have that structure is important, at least to have some direction. You don't want to have a definitive direction, but you can't have like no direction or like the music group one direction. So obviously you want to sit there and at least know, okay, I'm going in this general direction, you know, um, you know, it's almost like green day, you know, I walk a lonely road, the only one I've ever known. I don't know where it goes, but it's only me and I walk alone. So you're still walking. You just don't know exactly where the road is going exactly, but you have a general idea that whatever was in the past and wherever your present is now, you need to make your future more worthwhile and certain text steps have to be taken every day to sit there and ensure that that path gets followed. I think that's so beautiful, Matt, and something that it made me think about that I've had a conversation about this with someone recently is when we have a clear direction in which we're going, we're so much, it's so much easier to adjust the minor aspects of our schedule because subconsciously we know we have that point of comparison that every single change that we're going through, we get to reference, okay, is this change in line with where I'm going or is this not in line with where I'm going? And that way, it's we're less likely to be clinging to the thing that used to work for a long time and now it might or might not work as well. But because we have the North Star, that we're going towards, it's so much easier to make these decisions because you're like, well, this feels right. This was, this doesn't feel right. This is logical. This is not logical. It's just about the making the decision as opposed to stressing out. Oh, but this thing used to make me so happy. Why is it not working anymore? Kind of conversation. So thank you for sharing that. Um, are we ready to move on to the next section? Or do we have any final things we want to say? Good, good. Actually, I've got okay. one last thing All right, I want to so, share real quick. Yep. I'm going to share this real quick. This is this is in the book that I've written. Um, so you guys will see this at a later point, but yes. I think this is really powerful. Okay. So if you, if you, and again, you guys will see this in more detail, but on the left side, you have the outcome. So this is your desired outcome, and this can be applicable to recreation as well. You put the desired outcome, and that, that goes through everything that we shared today. You know, Maybe, as Marlene said, that's a sense of community. Maybe that's a, a sense of personal development, whatever it is. And then these are all the options that you have to achieve that desired outcome. So community, just as Marlene said, you could go to church. You could join this group. You could do various things to achieve the said outcome. The obstacles, this is the part where we allow flexibility, because just as Rosa had said, change is always occurring, and you may have a plan and a navigation, and then you get derailed, or, or you get COVID, and you're, you're sick now, and your plans are different. Something happens. So when you can, and, and by the way, we cannot foresee all obstacles, right? There are things that are out of our control, but when you have the desired outcome, you have the ways to achieve it, and then you look at the obstacles, then you have that flexibility point to go back to your options chart and try the next thing until you achieve the outcome. I hear people all the time say, well, I've tried everything. Have you really, have you really tried everything? You, you got a one-way ticket to Japan? No, you haven't tried everything. There are uh, multiple ways to achieve that outcome. But I just thought I'd share because that's a small little graph that, that might be helpful for you guys. I'll give it back to you, Rosa. That's beautiful. Thank you. All right. So we've talked about how important it is to bring in those activities that makes us happy, but we're all busy. We all have stuff going on. So my personal agenda at the moment is figuring out how to microdose those recreation acti recreational activities. And five minutes is pretty enough for to be sprinkled throughout the day. They, it really does the job. So 
Here is a little list that we can definitely add on to. I'm going to be mindful of the time because I do want to do a five minute session at the end so we can breathe and move very gently, not too much, not, not a lot of crazy movement. <laughs> uh, but so I have a list of things and I would love to hear any five minute ideas from you guys as well. So 10, anytime, honestly, 10 deep breaths is all, always works and it doesn't even take five minutes, but anytime we're in, in the moment or in a particular mood, 10 breaths allows us to slow down enough to figure out what the hell is wrong because most of the time the things that make us mad are not the things that are actually bothering us so that's always great to take a moment um yeah looking out of the window and just watching trees watching people watching i don't know whatever you see birds listening to birds like Matt, like matt said I know, maybe Keegan wants to do some push-ups for five minutes in between his Zoom calls with his clients. That's always invigorating. I wouldn't do it for five minutes necessarily. I think Marlene is on the same page with me, but maybe a couple, yes. Um, yeah, I used to go out into the hallway in my apartment building and go up and down the staircase for five minutes. It's exhausting. It's like staircases never get easy. Like, I think no matter what your health state is. Um, yeah, I remember from last time we had that conversation, Ashley mentioned just playing with your kids and just being reminded of, oh, hey, this is so much, there's so much fascinating stuff around us. Just seeing the world through their eyes is a great, great opportunity. Um, Five minute meditation. Not everyone loves meditating, but it's always there. And there's so many resources to really take a moment. Playing music, like we said, someone mentioned, someone actually played a song and we all remember how much joy that brought to everyone. So if that's accessible, or even if not, I have my friend recently started taking breaks and she would learn ukulele during her breaks. Like she had found an app and she would, okay, I'm taking a five minute break. And then it's like very awful sounding at the moment, but it's very fa fascinating for her because she's figuring it out. She's going from having this very specific spreadsheet kind of work into this figuring out mode. How do you make the sound happen? So things like that, going to the bathroom is awesome too. I think every time I get stuck, I just go to the bathroom, wash my hands. And then so all of a sudden I have an idea and that's wonderful. Um, reading a poem, honestly, there's so many, so many things. Do you guys wanna add something absurd that? <laughs> to me, some of the best things that come to my mind and when I'm driving. Yeah. I don't know why, but it just, uh, yes. Yeah. So for me, it's that it's the driving and all of a sudden I'm, I'm thinking and focusing on other things that are cool. Yeah. So I just want to share one thing. And then if anybody has any last minute thoughts, I want to pass it back to Rosa because we're, we're pretty much at the time limit. One thing is the, the game of questions. When you sit and just ask yourself empowering questions, that can be a really good way to recreate, to clear your mind, to give yourself some power and, and change your state. So an example of that might be, what is the opportunity here? I know we've talked about this. What can I learn from this? What is the lesson? How can I use this to change somebody else's life? So it, it's just a really powerful way to change your state. Love it. Do you want to close us out with a five minute, Rosa? Yeah, I'd love that. So how are we feeling? Do we need, do we feel like we want a little calm? I feel like the energy is very calm. Do we need a little pick me up? 
situation. Yeah. Do it. All right, let's do it. Okay. So get comfortable. Well, I'll guide us through. It's a breathing, moving meditation. But we're not every. We're not moving. We're not doing aerobics. You'll see. So let's just start by giving the hands a shake. And you can imagine as if you just finished dishes and you're shaking the water off your hands and there's this similar level of satisfaction that you just accomplished a chore, you know? And we'll take five deep breaths here, inhaling through the nose and exhaling out through the mouth. You can close the eyes if you like. And gently rest the hands on the thighs and enjoy the tingling sensation in the hands. As you just shook your whole body up and you can think of it as holding, like shaking up a water bottle and you know how it's all rearranged, all the molecules are rearranged within the bottle. So maybe some things will come to surface, whether thoughts or sensations, physical or emotional. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is gently nod at them, acknowledge them. We're not trying to do anything about them right now. Ready, you can flutter the eyes open and we'll place the hands onto the belly. And we'll start with a breath of fire. If you don't know what it is, it's sharp exhales through the nose and then the inhale will just naturally come into also through the nose. And then we'll do this for 50 exhales. I'll count. You can connect to my rhythm or go along with yours if that is distracting for you. It's more important that it's working for you than you matching my rhythm. I'm gonna shut up now. So inhale through the nose and start exhaling. Nice inhale and exhale again. And just to wake the brain up a little bit, we'll do this exercise. I haven't done it in a really long time. So if I mess up, don't judge me. But basically what we're doing is we'll start with one hand is trying to snap a triangle here. The other hand is going up and down the line. And we want to keep these shapes as we're going on. This is kind of tricky, but then you'll get it. It helps to look at someone who's doing it right, but then when they mess up, you're done. So just go for it. You'll pick it up if something goes off. Yeah, laughing is great. We don't really have to take ourselves so seriously all the time. And then meet in the middle, going up and down with both hands and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So now the left hand is going up and down and then the right hand is going into that triangle. Whoa, 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 homework. 
And come back into center with both hands. And shake it out. Good job, everyone. <laughs> and rest the hands on the thighs, close the eyes. And check in with how your whole self was feeling now. The body, the mind, your heart. Maybe check in with how you felt just four minutes ago. Notice we've been talking about change so much today. Take one deep inhale together and exhale out. Yeah, do the sound if that makes you happy. Flutter the eyes open when you're ready. That's it. Thank you for taking five. Thank I'm so happy we got to have this conversation today. So hey. guys. In, in closing, I just want to say, Rosa, thank you so much for your time today. I love the, the sheet that you sent us. I like the exercise. It's really nice to switch things up and have a new take on things. Um, this has been an incredible journey. So for, for Ashley and Marlene, we do have our call next week. And basically, it is going to be kind of a consolidation of this, questions, answers, things like that. And I'll be discussing the next mastermind group. There's a completely different spin. Be incredible if you guys could join us. If not, that's okay too. I would love to hear your feedback on the topics and thoughts and basically just get your, your thoughts and opinions on this group overall. But I just want to say thank you so much. I hope that you all have an incredible day and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. Y'all have a great day. Thank you, Rosa. You too. Have Bye. a good one, Ashley. Bye, Thank Keegan. you. Bye. <laughs>